Hey everybody! So today we're going to talk some more about Pluto's return here in the U.S. when transit Pluto comes back to the natal placement of where natal Pluto is in the U.S.'s natal chart. <laughs> um, but we're going to be talking about it from the lens of the 2022-2023 solar return. The reason normally I wouldn't look this far in advance into the future for a solar return, but I'm doing it here because Pluto's return happens Pluto comes back to its exact, transit Pluto comes back to its exact natal placement in the U.S.'s natal chart three separate times in 2022. One is in February, I think it's like February 20th or 22nd of 2022. The other one is July 12th of 2022. And the last time, and that, that one's from retrograde motion. And then again from, and then again from direct motion on, June, on December 27th of 2022. So in three three different times, it will be coming back to its natal placement. So I wanted to go ahead and look at the solar return for 2022, 2023, since two of those, the one on July 12th and December 27th, will happen during the 2022, 2023 solar return. Now, before I get started, I wanna make the disclaimer that I am not doing this to be scary. This is not a fear mongering exercise. Um, this is, I believe that information is power. Knowledge is power. And um, to be prepared is a good thing. So not doing this to be scary. So I wanna put that out there. And also I have a blog post on this. I, I will link it, put it in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can just copy it. Or actually you should just be able to click that. If you're watching it on Instagram, you'll have to copy and paste or manually enter the link. Um, Check it out because this blog post goes will go into a lot more detail than I'm about to go into here just for time reasons. So do check it out. I mentioned so I'm gonna talk about more. I've talked about more in the blog post and I will talk about here in this video. So anyway, <clears throat> let's get started. Okay, so this is the solar return chart for 2022, 2023 for the US. Um, we have Gemini is the rising. And we have Mercury, the chart ruler, in Cancer in the first. The Sun, which will always be at 13, 19 Cancer in us in the US's solar return chart. It's also in the first house. Um, you always want to look at the moon and solar return charts. That is in Virgo in the fourth. Um, you want to look at Saturn as well. Saturn tends to show where we are tested or where we have to put in work. That is retrograde. It is in Aquarius in the ninth house. And then I also like to look at the nodes in solar return charts tends to show where we are coming from, from the previous year and where we want to go during the solar return. We've got the, south, got the solar return south node in Scorpio in the sixth, and then the solar return north node is in Taurus in the 12th. Okay, <clears throat> so solar return sun in the first, it makes me think automatically that Our focus as a country is it's going to be more on the appearance of the country, on um, reactions to things, knee-jerk reactions to things, natural attitudes towards things. Um, all of those are going to be kind of front and center. Um, we have the solar return ascendant is in Gemini. Gemini is is changeable, not in the way like Uranus is changeable, but it Mercury is the lower octave of Uranus. Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury, so it, there is change there. There's also, you know, where Mercury is in Cancer, so there's change that's changeable too in a moodier kind of way. I do wonder if we actually talk about. If we st if we talk about in a in a more serious way, or if I, more ideas are tossed around about like the actual changing of the way this country is laid out, whether that's geographic borders of states, <clears throat> adding states, eliminating states, um, perhaps like adding Puerto Rico as a state, I could see any of those things coming up, at least talked about. Um, now we also have the moon in the fourth house; it's in Virgo. There is a mutual reception between the moon in Virgo and Mercury in Cancer, which feels like it strengthens both of these. Um, the 
the moon in Virgo in the fourth house, we, we should be focused on this country. We really should be. We should be emotionally focused on this country. And I feel like it's going to be like in getting really fucking organized <laughs> or um, trying to perfect something about this country. Now, we're so divided and I'll be curious to see what this looks like going into the 2022 solar term, but we're so divided right now that I feel like it's going to be like perfecting different <clears throat> different groups or different parts. It, it doesn't feel so cohesive. And with the south node in the in the sixth house in Scorpio, that feels like fucking chaos. So it feels like we're, we're going into the solar return of 2022. It feels very chaotic and not organized, which could be where that moon in Virgo comes in, in the fourth house. Like, uh, wanting to get really organized. That seems possible here. Um, like emotionally we want to get organized, but I'm just not sure how cohesive it is, how, um, <laughs> I'm not sure how, how stable it is. It just, it feels, I, it feels, it feels more divided to me right now, but I will be curious to see how that actually feels as we get closer to that time for when the 2022 solar return happens starts happening. Um, but I, I, I do think there will be a pull to get organized. I think we do need to watch being too critical of one another. I think we probably do and voicing these criticisms, especially since there is the mutual reception between the moon and Virgo and Mercury and Cancer. And we've got a Gemini ascendant for this year. It just, we need to watch for being too emotionally critical of one another and we need to put those criticisms where they actually belong it doesn't belong at people it doesn't it doesn't belong directed towards people who who think differently than you or feel differently than you and there is going to be an ele an element of um thoughts are going to be very emotional this year in this particular solar return because of, of gemini because of sorry mercury being in cancer there is going to be that element um we just need to make sure that we put these criticisms, there, there are things about this country to critique, but we need to make sure that we put these where they actually belong. And it's not on regular people like you and me. It's not on us. We need to be putting it on other things, on other people, on other, we just don't need to direct it at one another. Um, there are things to critique, critique but not one another. <laughs> we need to make sure we don't do that. Um, and I think there might be some of that that goes on. We also have the descendant. The SR descendant is in Sagittarius. That's the shadow. Uh, we need to watch for dogmatic beliefs. I think we do. Um, it's also in an Aquarius degree, which does make me, like I mentioned before, Aquarius is, is very much it's brother and sisterhood, right? But but Aquarius energy and Uranus energy can do this thing where it, it, they don't really want to, um, they're accepting, but they're only accepting of people that are different than, that, that are the same as they are, people that are different than they are. They're not as accepting of that kind of difference. That, that doesn't always happen with this energy, but it can. And since the descendant is actually in Sagittarius, it does make me wonder if some of this, some of that kind of way of being does come over into beliefs. We need to make sure we're just not, we need to make sure that we are not too dogmatic with our beliefs as a country. We need to make sure that we're not, um, and that they don't shoot us in the foot. <laughs> um, we have Saturn. We have solar return Saturn. It is in the ninth house. Automatically. I think things like travel could be restricted. I think that's possible. Now ninth house is more international stuff. Um, more international travel, but because, um, because Saturn is retrograde, I do wonder if it might actually be more domestic travel being um, being restricted. I could see that happening. Um, I could. I could see it being more of a domestic issue. It might be international too, but I could see there being issues with travel just here in the U.S., being able to travel around. Um, also, with Saturn in the ninth house, I, I automatically, my mind automatically goes to the Supreme Court. Ninth house is higher court. Supreme Court is the highest court in the U.S. So, I do wonder if there's going to be a case that they hear, that they decide on, something like that, that be, ends up being a test to the people in this country. I could see that happening. Um, now, Saturn is actually, it is in conjunct the moon. <clears throat> And Saturn squares the nodal axis. So it makes me think that 
okay, let's say, let's play devil's advocate and say that the country was actually coming together and actually getting really organized, right? Actually trying to get really organized together, all together, not just different parts, but together. The Supreme Court might come in and hear some case or decide on some case and it ends up throwing a wrench in everything. I could see something like that happening. I'm not saying that that exact thing will happen, but I could see something like that happening. Um, because Saturn and the moon don't see one another. They are in conjunct or king kinks. They don't see one another. So it's not like they're working at opposite ends. They just literally don't see each other. I could, I could see something like that coming past. Not that exact thing, but something like that. But my mind does go to like restrict, restricted travel or, um, or something a higher court hears or decides on. Um, now, because Saturn is in Aquarius, I was looking, and because it's retrograde, I was looking at past Supreme Court cases that were heard or decided when Saturn was also in Aquarius, because there is like a callback or an echoing to the retrograde motion here. Um, I have more things that I'm about to mention right now in, in the blog post, so do check it out. But um, I know the civil rights some of those cases that start that started when Saturn was in Aquarius in the 1960s, but some of those cases, um, they were they were heard when Saturn was in Aquarius. I could see a callback to something like that, not exactly like civil rights played out in the 1960s, but there but a new kind of civil rights might come to pass, might come up. Um, I. And with, with everything going on in the world right now, I think we can all take some guesses as to what might come up. <laughs> um, but I could see that coming to pass, something like that. Um, I have some other examples though in the blog post, do check it out. But I, I, do, think, I do think whatever is heard or, or decided, if there is anything like that going on, it will echo something from a previous time that Saturn was in Aquarius. Um, yeah, and I think that is Whatever this is and how we respond to that is a massive test for us this year because Saturn does square the nodes. Um, I already mentioned the south node in Scorpio in the sixth house. Now, the north node is in Taurus in the 12th, which feels very, you know, like the, the 12th house is a lot of things, but it's, it's, it's kind of like a dissolving of boundaries and like coming together, if you will, uh, achieving oneness. Taurus is security and stability and all that kind of stuff. We also have Uranus conjunct the, the North Node, which makes me think that there probably is like an element of, of change to how this happens. Um, but that is what we're wanting to do this year. Do we actually do it? I don't know. <laughs> but these are things that I do think um, will come up or might come up in some way. But um, just want to throw that out there. Um, I'm going to get going. But do check out the blog post because it goes into a lot more detail about stuff than I had time to do here. I was trying to make these like 15 minutes <laughs> or less. So, um, so yeah. Um, if you want to uh, follow us on Instagram, you can find us at Let's Fuck With Astrology. I'm at Saturn Season Astrology on Instagram. Natalie is at Paternal Astrology on Instagram. If you want to like or subscribe or whatever the fuck people do on YouTube, <laughs> you can find us by searching for Let's Fuck With Astrology. Uh, if you do the Reddit thing, come join us on the subreddit Let's Fuck With Astrology. And if you're interested in the star cards, go to letsfuckwithastrology.com slash star dash cards. Okay, y'all. I'll see y'all later.